Your needs may vary, but I need one hour of great gameplay for every $5 you charge me. Hence, for a $5 game, I need a solid hour of entertainment. $20 game, four hours. For a $70 game, I need 14 hours. And this isn't mediocre time. This is solid entertainment value. This game is $20 on Steam and includes all the existing DLC. I'm just past the four hour point on Crime Boss, so I'm ready to review it and see if it's worth your cash. Let's get to it, stick around. Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here. When Crime Boss Rock A City was announced last year, I was stunned by the celebrity power it wielded. Actors like Danny Glover from Lethal Weapon, Kim Basinger from the original Batman, Chuck Norris, famous martial artist actor, Mike Madsen from tons of films, and even Danny Trejo from, well, everywhere. That man is in everything from Modern Family to Sons of Anarchy and, of course, Machete. When the trailer ended and I was ready to buy, then I discovered it was on Epic Games exclusively, so I set a calendar event for March 2024, one year later. March 2024 came and went with no notice of Steam release, so I kindly gave up on it. Fortunately, it finally came to Steam mid-June 2024, and here we are ready to check it out. It is reasonable to expect a game with so much star power to be a relatively crappy game. In fact, even with some play videos, I still wasn't completely sure what it was. Open world heist game, multiplayer only, on rails? I wasn't really ready for what it really is, which is a roguelike FPS focused on taking over a city with your crime circuit. Sounds about right. But it is sort of hard to imagine this, so let's see if we can make it clearer. The game loop has three main components, generic heists, storyline heists, and territorial acquisition and maintenance. Multiplayer lets you take four people and do random or selected missions that take place during the main solo game loop. Four of you will attempt a heist with gradually improving weapons you can buy from the store, in-game currency, not real money, as you level up. The lobbies aren't overflowing though, but you can pick and join a random session or something from one in progress. Solo mode is the roguelike game mode that has all the game loops as part of the equation, and that's what we'll focus on since multiplayer is similar outside the direct multiplayer elements. The DLC that is included is the same roguelike game mode with additional storyline heists. We'll get to all this in a minute. If you ever played the famous classic game Defender of the Crown, the Amiga version is being shown here, you might feel right at home in this game. In that game, you tried to unify England under your banner by acquiring unclaimed lands and fighting for those claimed by other people. You have to repel attacks by the other lords of the realm, you get the idea. This is oddly the exact same core loop in the solo roguelike game. The Rock A City is divided into territories by rival gangs, and like Defender of the Crown, the more land you own, the more money you make each main game loop. In this game, a main game loop lasts for one day. Just like Defender of the Crown, you are limited on how much you can do during a single game loop. The main loop consists essentially of taking, stealing, and defending territories, performing generic random heists, and performing storyline-driven heists that move the narrative forward. You have two types of employees, soldiers and characters. Soldiers are your territorial army. Each day you can purchase a small number of soldiers to add to it. These, of course, cost cash. This army can be sent to take unclaimed territory at 10 soldiers a shot. You can attack someone else's territory and send a certain number. The more you send, the more likely you are to succeed, but it will cost more to deploy them. The game will help you decide how many soldiers is a no-win scenario, high risk or low risk. Sometime rival gangs will come after your turf and you'll need to send soldiers to push them off. When your soldiers go down during these disputes, they are used up for the day. So the bigger the army, the more territorial actions you can take on a given day. Characters are permadeath boutique characters that you can hire to your team each playthrough. This team is who you take on generic and storyline heists. The boss, Taylor, played by Michael Madsen, is key to the game. If he dies in a heist, the run is over and you have to start again. Until you have a good group of teammates, though, you're going to have to use him. Plus, you get more loot when you take him along. All about the greed, right? Each character has different features, bonuses, weaknesses, weapons. They're expensive, but they're necessary to the game. 
Let's start with the high action territorial disputes. It's essentially an arena shooter where you play one of the soldiers. Huge firefights, different locations, exploding cars, gas cans, tons of weapons. It's a complete frag fest. And while it seems that would be rut and rinse, you actually get new guns and such over time, so it keeps things sort of fresh. Once you knock out enough of the grunts, a boss character will come out, you know, someone with a lot of HP and some super weapon like a chainsaw. Putting him down ends the round and you win. You retain or take the territory. If you lose, you lose the territory or the territory stays with its original owners. Now this is tons of mindless fun. Michael Rooker's a Nazi looking skinhead with a very foul mouth and a mohawk. It's hard to believe he was Brandy's dad in Mallrats. Anywho, he is the announcer during these territorial disputes. The genetic heists are just that, randomized, procedurally generated type heists, knock over a gas station, steal jewelry from a truck, ransack a mall, steal a briefcase, that sort of thing. You'll start to see the same core missions in different locations fairly quickly, and then you'll start to see the same missions in the same locations. These are all about earning cash, getting commodities you need to trade for stuff in the storyline missions, and of course, earning XP. Each mission has a bonus you can earn, like not setting off alarms, not killing the SWAT team, whatever. Heists in general share some common elements, usually casing the establishment, finding out how to hide from the cameras, the order to restrain the guards in, and that sort of thing. Sometimes you can take what you found, other times you'll have to unlock doors, crack safes, or find codes to doors scattered somewhere in the level. Heists also have a number of team members you can take with you, up to a total of four. Remember, each one gets a cut of your loot, and they can only be used once per day. So while it's tempting to send as many people as possible, it may not make financial sense based on the risk. Remember, if those team members die mid-heist, they don't recover the next day. You're buying another one to replace them. The storyline heists are similar, but usually more extensive, longer curated heists that drive the storyline. For example, Danny Glover may come and tell you he's got a lead on a great heist, but the dude with the deets wants a big diamond ring for his wife in exchange for the information. You may have to do several storyline heists to set up an escape vehicle, secure zip lines, get a helicopter, etc., so you can steal the ring. So the big heist Danny has for you is just one heist of many to move the story along. There are a lot of them, but even with the DLC, if you play them enough times, you're going to start seeing dupes. Oh, and there are some interesting story branches that can happen if you screw up part of the heist. If you fail to secure the zip line, you'll still be able to play the heist, but you'll have to jump off the building, essentially taking damage right away. If this wasn't enough fun, the cops are around looking to bust everybody. How much heat you bring down during your heist seems to affect the investigation process they make each day. It seems like about 12% each day, so maybe 9 or 10 days before you'll have to deal with them. Once you've done all the territory disputes you can, your whole heist team is resting and you're out of money for the day, you select end day and you do it all again. Your soldier army resets, your heist team is ready to go back to work, and there'll be more territorial stuff to do, maybe new missions, unfinished storylines, etc. You can do things like take out loans for a quick cash infusing, but you'll pay it back over the course of several days, so make sure it's worth it. Kim Basinger is your financial expert, and I gotta be honest, if I didn't know it was Kim, I wouldn't have known. Doesn't look like her, doesn't sound like her. Hey, but still easy on the eyes, right? Currently, the only way I know the run ends is if you let Taylor die. You can run out of money, and I think if you're negative long enough, you'll lose too. I imagine if you lose all your territory, the game would be over too. Usually my greed of taking Taylor with me is my source of demise. Once your run ends, you will be given some loot magazines. Same thing you get each XP you level up with. You'll get three magazines, weapons, skins, new team members, etc., and you get to choose one. Some are only good in multiplayer, though, so pay close attention when choosing. Your unlocks and XP carry over from run to run, so there's the driving factor for replay. Unlock more, get further, die less, but still try again. That's pretty much it. Other reviews have a few common complaints, and most of them are legit. A majority of the heists feel generic because they're generated. You'll see the same types, if not identical, heists come up. People complain that the acting sucks and there's too much profanity. My gut says this game was created during the COVID pandemic, and these actors use this game to make some scratch from the safety of their homes. Rooker is a completely over-the-top and foul-mouthed little Nazi, but it works. Glover is probably the best overall. He seems to care about what he was doing. Manson gets a ton of lines and story arc, but of everyone, he seems to be phoning it in most of the time.
Danny Trejo plays a crime boss just like you, and he sinks himself into the role perfectly. It feels like a cartoon gangster game, and yes, this isn't Call of Duty cutscene fodder, but if you take that in stride that it isn't trying to be anything more than it is, I can live with occasional goofy character dialogue. Some have complained about the gunplay being subpar, and I certainly wouldn't call it firearm reference material, but it's good enough for me. Each gun feels distinct enough, but you won't be customizing them with stocks and barrels. You do get some new ones, though, though through unlocks. So where do I stand on the game value front? I'd say this game has about 20 to 25 hour lifespan in total before it might be too rotten rinse, and you've probably played through all the storyline heists for the game and the two DLCs. If you're okay with obvious procedural generation, and if you like Diablo 3, you'll be fine here. Occupying a good chunk of the game, or if you're a fan of the Star Power cast and want to see how they all play out, there's plenty to see and do. If multiplayer's your bag, you might take a buy on this one. The multiplayer servers just aren't overflowing, and I assume it will get worse from here. This would be a good game if you had three friends you could always guarantee to connect with and play together. When you're playing with AI team members, they do a good job, but you can be extra greedy with a solid, experienced team of humans. The game is $20, including the DLC, and that's before the summer sale coming up. It's a $20 game. Hey, Green Man Gaming had it for like 17 bucks recently. And for $20, this game is good ROI. At $60, I would have told it to pack sand, but at this price, I don't have any issue with recommending this game if the game loop sounds at all interesting. Do you agree with my review? Leave a comment. If you don't agree, leave a comment. As always, if you like what we're doing, share, like, subscribe, ding the bell. While you're here, check out some of these other videos right here on Monroe World. Thanks for watching. Take care.